Hello, this is OK Art, and I'm Kay. I'm a bit under the weather today. You might be able to hear it in my voice. Um, we will be adding some Prismacolor to this page. I recently finished the marker base and figured out which Prismacolor pencils I will be using. They're set up over there. Uh, let's get you to the overhead view. Okay, here we are overhead. Um, I think I'm going to start with the eye. I started with the, the scales with the, uh, with the, uh, marker base, but I think I'm going to work from the eye out when it comes to this part. So first let's, uh, shade some of these little tops. We'll start with green. The greens I have here are 909, which is grass green, and 913, which is spring green. <sighs> I meant to start this yesterday, but I was too under the weather to do anything yesterday. And so... I almost didn't even do it today, but I had posted that I would, so I am. Okay, so first we're going to use the 909, and I think, how the heck am I going to shade this? Okay, I think I'm just going to shade, like, the outside edges here. I'm using a light pressure, just because I don't really know what I'm doing right away. Um, and a little bit on this side as well. I'm using circles. There's this little peak right here that I'm going to... I accidentally colored it, colored over with marker, so I'm gonna do the outside with the dark green, and it it should lay fine over that. So I like doing the marker base. Okay, I think I'm liking how that's looking. Yeah. So then I'm gonna use my uh, 913 spring green. That's going to be for this middle part. And I'm just going to go along the edges here. Also, I'm going to go right in the middle of this top part that I just messed up, but that's okay. Uh, and just kind of bring this part in. There we go. And then I'm going to go back to my uh, 909 and just kind of fix this little part. Uh-oh. Maybe. There we go. Okay. And then I'm also going to darken up these sides where I was a little light-handed. I'm happy with how it's coming together, so I can go in with a little bit firmer pressure and then do some lines going inwards, like a so, and then on this side, do the same thing. Okay, and I think I like, yeah, that makes like just enough of a difference. If you, especially if you, hold on, let me get this a little bit farther in for this part. Then add some of this to kind of bring it together. Okay, especially if you compare this one to like one of these ones that I have not done. It, it yeah, it pulls it all together. So if you're wondering why this page might look like, I could call it finished, but adding these little 
touches with pencil over top of the marker really, really pulls it together. So using that darker green right here. What's it actually called again? Grass green? And then spring green in the middle. And then going again with this. Grass green here. All right, I like how that one looks. So now we can move on to the other little one over here. Let's get this one knocked out. Oops, I'm starting with the wrong one. Sick and absent-minded. <laughs> uh, okay, so the outside with the grass green. Uh, put in a little bit more. And then pull it together. There we go. Let's do this one. This one for, for this outside part is going to be shaded again for the eye. So I don't want to press as hard on this side as I'm going to on this side. Because I don't want to stop uh, the pencil from being able to layer over it. And these two. I, okay. Sometimes I, I doubt myself and I'm right now looking at this and I'm looking at that. Yay. Doing something right. <laughs> I didn't shade that one quite well enough, but I can bring it in here. Shade this part more. Bring it in with a lighter touch and then shiza. Excuse my language. <laughs> uh, da -da -da. Okay, and then this for some reason, see how I colored these two parts green here? And they were already green with marker. For some reason, here it ended up being orange. Uh, hopefully I can just go over that with pencil. We'll see. It's probably going to be one of those th mistakes that I will hyper-focus on and no one else probably would have noticed. Oh, I did post a poll. Um, I will have less time for coloring for the next month. My daughter's birthday party is... Um, gonna be mid-March and it's Alice in Wonderland themed so I am having to craft a lot of the uh, stuff for her party I kind of go all out for birthday parties um, but my husband brought up that I could record the process of crafting all that stuff and I wasn't sure if that would be something that you guys would want to watch or not let me know down in the comments or also you can let me know by voting on that poll. Uh, yeah, that'd be a big help. Okay, all the green ones are done. And I think I'm happy. Let me look from the camera's view. I'm gonna fix up this one. It just needs a little bit extra shading. I felt like it was too bright. Cute, okay. Yay! I like that. Okay. Now we're gonna do the... Did I pull anything out to shade the blue? Uh-oh. Minor mistake. Alright, how about if we go on to the orange and then I'll have to pause to grab... I grabbed a, uh, a shade for the blue, but not the highlight color for the blue. So we'll have to... Go find that after we do the orange. Okay, so for orange, we have 918 orange. And I think I'm planning on using 1032, which is pumpkin orange, as the shading color. So here's these two. Because, yeah, because the other one is for gold shading. And this 
orange is also going to be used for the gold shading. So, sharpening this real fast. We're going to do these orange uh, tops the same way that I did the green ones. So, first doing the edge. And this is pumpkin orange. Hopefully I pulled it dark enough. Orange. Going in all the way to the edges and then kind of like just tear dropping it. Because the shading would be wider at the widest part. I mean the highlight at the widest part and then it, it comes in here so it would also come in for the shading part. Then use the orange to go over this part. Now let me look at the camera and make sure that that's even... Yeah, okay. I could go a little bit more extreme with the shading, but I'm choosing not to. I like I like that and I don't want to ruin it. So coming over here, again for this part, not pressing as hard when I get to these edges uh, over here where it's going to be eye shading. Um, also this video might just me be me doing the uh, inside of this eye, then we'll have a part two of the scales uh, and a part three of these are they horns i feel like they're not they're just like protrusions but uh let me just darken this up a little bit more the most nerve-wracking part of this for me is going to be this eye shading because I feel like I could do so well on these buildings and then it could, has the potential to go very wrong. And there we go. All right, moving to this one. This one looks muddy already for some reason. I'm not sure why, but let's see if we can fix that. And bring orange into the very middle. Now I'm pressing hard right here just to kind of bring it all in. I think I like that. All right. And then this one right here, I don't. I feel like I'm just going to use the dark orange just lightly on it. Yeah, because that's going to be shaded. All right, now I'm going to pause for a second so that I can find my blue highlight color. Okay, so looking at my, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? My swatch sheet here, none of these blues really seemed like it was going to tie in. Maybe 903? Eh, no. Um, I'm thinking maybe 905 might work. What I'm gonna do real fast is use the back of my uh, card where I am keeping track of all the colors I'm gonna be using for this. Let's use the back of it real fast and uh, draw like a shape, shade the edges of said shape with our shading color that I've already picked out bring that in here and on both sides this is just a rough thing to try to see if it matches up and then bring this in ah. Hmm. You know what? I might have picked the wrong shading color for that. 
Give me one more second. Okay, so I went back and I think what I'm going to do is use 1027 as my shading color. And then I can lightly go over with my previously picked 901 and kind of darken it up. Because the 901 by itself was too blue. It didn't have enough green pulled into it. Uh, but when it's over top, I think it works better. Yeah, so this feels more authentic to what I was picturing. So that's what we're going to go with. So let me add these two colors over here. This, oops, well, it would help if I had a pen that worked. Nine, oh, joy. You know what, it's okay. I'll just write it in this. 905, and what is this one? 1027. Okay, let's carry on. <laughs> So what did I say? Oh yeah. Okay, so the 27, which is peacock blue. We're gonna start with this one. So this one on the very outside edge. Oh yeah, that definitely looks like a darker color of the one I picked. And go to the outside. Kind of. Lightening up if you get to right here, like halfway down that line. Okay, and then going in with the 905, which is aquamarine, right in the middle. Much better color pick. I think what happened is I just completely forgot about picking colors for these blue tops. I think that the previously picked 901 is actually what I'm planning on using to darken up the sky after I go over it with the purple. So that was my bad. But now that I actually went in and color picked, this looks right. And I'm not gonna have to use the 901 on these either because they are dark enough. Okay, then let's move on to this top. Again, using the 1027. Going in on the outside. Bringing it in a bit. Using our hard pressure more towards the outside of the shapes and then using this and like a medium hard pressure just kind of going back and forth and going back over the edges with the darker shape yeah okay and then these two are left this one's right smack dab in the middle of the eye. Oh, and I don't know if I mentioned, but I did decide on not doing the uh, iris or pupil of the eye. Cause I like, I feel like it would block out the main section of this. And I see a lot of people do the pupil and I like how it looks, but I kind of want this whole thing to just be seen. It's such a shame to cover up any of this artwork right here so I'm gonna leave it for my for my finished page I'm gonna leave it uh, is that yeah I think the tip was already drawn to this side which seems weird to me I feel like it should be like here but that's okay All right, and then this one, again, it's within the shading. So on this side, I'm not pressing hard because it's all going to be within the shading on this side. But on this side, 
I'll go ahead and shade it as normal. And then I'm going to use my brighter color. I'm also just using medium pressure because it is in the shadow. It wouldn't be bright anyhow. And I think that that is all of the little roofs done. So now we're going to go into shading this like goldish, yellowish um, part. Let me put this back where I need it. Okay, and what I have for that, uh-oh, where did I put my orange? Hold on one second. I put my orange underneath my entire collection of Christmas colors. There we go. Okay. So I have terracotta, which is um, 944, orange, which is 918, and of course the yellow, which is 916. And this is what I like to use for gold colors and stuff. Um, typically, there's like a little bit of a reddy tone as well. But I think the terracotta has enough red hint to it. Wait. I might add some of my uh, pumpkin orange. We'll see if it needs it. Also, no. I'm going to try to do this without using my white because my white's getting pretty short. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to start, I think, with the darkest parts. So let's sharpen up the terracotta. I should really pre-sharpen before I start recording. I thought I did, but it appears as if I did not. So obviously the darkest parts of this are going to be inside these doorways. So I'm going to use a terracotta inside the doorways, inside the entire doorway, because um, unless it's like, this one is bigger and it's right in the middle. So for this one, I'm gonna do the top with the terracotta. Make sure I'm letting off of my pressure right here where like it looks like stairs start. Using hard pressure at the very top. And then I think I'm gonna use the pumpkin orange at the very bottom of that. Like to keep the shadow feel, but also like there'd be light going in there. Okay, I'm also going to go on every single one of these windows. Just the inside part, not the uh, edge of the window trim. So You also notice I did not pay any attention to these palm trees. I don't think I plan on paying any attention to the palm trees. Uh, we'll see if that's a mistake or not as we continue going. Also, you'll notice as I get into this part, if you're actually like now that I'm actually like pointing it out, that my shading with the markers is just super rough and it's. It's uh, it's basically just like a guide for me to see like where I'm going to be laying color. I think I got all the windows with the pencil. Oh, no. Here's some, and there's that. Okay. Now also with the terracotta still, um, the edges of each one of these buildings, I'm gonna lightly come in right underneath the ledge and then, or medium pressure underneath the ledge lightly um, after that and bring it down. So medium pressure, bring it down with like a lighter pressure. Medium pressure, bring it down with a lighter pressure. And then inside this book, there's a glare. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shade around the glare like a so, and it's gonna look a little bit weird at first. I'm also going to shade bits and pieces around these curves. And I need to sharpen again. Okay, then going in under here, a lighter pressure this time for this part because it's not. And then dark or heavy pressure right here in between these little buildings. 
And then use a lighter pressure. Everywhere I'm using a lighter pressure, I'm also probably going to go over with the uh, pumpkin orange with a heavier pressure. So getting this in here. Um, I'm not really worried about how I shade these because they're going to be shaded with the thing, but I'm still going with the eye shading. I'm still going to kind of lightly come in with all my colors so that when it's shaded, it still reads how I want it to read. Where have I not? Okay. Each of these on the underside and then shade upwards right here and then shade upwards and then here with a heavier pressure and then these because they're round you're gonna kind of like curve this way a little bit and not do circles and you can leave your edges kind of scratchy because that's how I would picture it being shaded anyways. Then kind of come on the other side and do the same. Even though it's not shaded within the book on this other side, I'm gonna I'm gonna shade it on the other side. Also, right here where this building meets this part. Okay, same for this. First shade the very outside edge. And then because it's round come in at like kind of an angle and pull all that inwards leaving the edges a little bit rough and then on the other side as well but not as much because I I'm viewing it kind of like it's uh, being viewed from a different angle than like directly head-on so at least that's how I'm seeing it in my mind as I'm coloring this Bend this side just a little bit. And this whole side where both buildings are meeting, I feel like would be shadowed, even if the shadow isn't built in there. Um, and, and on the other side, because this feels like another one of those round objects, I'm I shade both sides. Okay, and then let's do underneath here. Bring it down. Darken up right underneath the ledge and underneath this ledge. And then we're gonna highlight right here on this corner. So I'm going to leave that empty and then kind of shade down like this. All right, and then with this part, I think I'm going to come all the way, almost all the way in. Not quite all the way in because it's a round surface. I want to leave the middle so that I can uh, shade that better. Then on this side, hold on, let me, uh, something is wrong. Oh, my pencil's not sharpened. Okay. And there's something like right here that I'm gonna darken because it feels like it's a background object. Um, darken the side, bring it in towards the middle. And I'm going to be going over all this shading. This side turned out rough, but hopefully I can fix it. Uh, we're going to bring it in a little bit more around this window and let the highlight come in farther up. Each one of these needs a shade on either side. And because it's a round object, again, leaving the center open. Um, Uh, not on this part. That's an underneath part. This is a top part, so it might also be all the way shaded. This, however, would be exposed to some light. So we're going to leave the middle of that. And another round object where we're going to 
show you the edges. Okay, hopefully this is kind of coming together on camera. I can't stand up and check all the time. Okay. I'm gonna come underneath this dome. And I don't know why I shaded that like that with the marker, but with pencil I'm coming in on either side as a round object. Here's a smaller one where I just don't really bother feathering it in. I just kind of shake my pencil as I do the edges. Hmm. Okay, because these roofs come up, what I'm going to do is shade the middle here, the middle here, leave the very ends. And it's a small shape, so it's probably not necessary, but sometimes the small things make the difference. So again, leave the end, shade one side, leave the middle, shade that side, leave this end. And I don't, I don't know if there's any rhyme or reason to my thought process there. Uh, sometimes I just want to do things. Okay, and then this right here where the buildings meet up. Again, because this part is the farthest forward, everything, so over here, you'll notice that whenever a building overlapped, we shaded on the right side. Over here, we would shade on the left side because this building is ahead of this building. And same with, wait, hold on. My brain's a little bit confused at the, okay. This is a circular object that I did not shade correctly, so my brain got confused at what it was. Uh, then this would be behind that. Okay, I'm back on track. <laughs> okay, this is behind that. Shade it in. Okay, shade underneath. Um, <laughs> so shade the outsides of each of these and then leave i'm going to leave this corner to be a highlight oh i miss this guy all right and then shade this going up because i feel like it goes out and then in and shade like the bottom of this. Okay, now, now onto this bottom part, which I don't think I've touched at all. Oh, let me shade this. Oh, this is a circle one. Turn around. Bring it in on both sides. I'm going to ignore the window for right now. Right, and on this side, I feel like I'm getting less careful as I get more comfortable as I start coloring and sometimes it doesn't work out in my favor. Okay, and then we'll do the underneath of this and some of this edge work, maybe some of this lightly, just lightly. Um, This right here behind, I'm going to ignore the palm tree. All right. The entire palm tree is just shaded. Okay. <laughs> and bring it in like that. Okay. And then there's that and some edge shading here. All right. Then our next, oh wait, am I going to use this? We'll see if I need to use the pumpkin orange. Actually, I'm going to move on to the orange, which is kind of what I like to use for like a middle color. So I'm going to go in anywhere where it's like kind of scratchy with the darker color. Also, anywhere where I left room for a highlight, the very edges of that need to be orange to tie in the yellow. So the scratchiness here. Is gonna be orange. The mid tone shading here, all the scratching is here. So, in other words, every round object will have a little bit of orange more toward the middle part. And also, 
uh, on each edge that will end up being yellow. Go on the thread, go on the thread, leave some empty. And if you accidentally don't leave that empty, I mean, if you're using Prismacolor, I'm pretty sure it'll be fine. But here you'll notice the difference where I left it empty here and it looks shiny. And I didn't, I forgot, I just kind of went over that one lazily and it doesn't look as shiny. And that is purely because um, of the room left for yellow. Uh, this one I had kind of, I kind of got crazy with my scratchiness with the darker color. I'm hoping that I can fix that when I get to the yellow. We will see. Alright, and I'm bringing some of this orange down now and also inside here. And around each of those around the edges of the circle thing and down this way from that shading uh, the rest of this inside part and we're gonna kind of shade away from the center here um, I'm using I'd say like medium light pressure I'm not going in very hard. Okay, and then right on each edge of this, I'm going to add just like the tiniest bit. Just because I feel like it's too much yellow all at once. So, the tiniest bit right there. Oh, the edges of these. higher edge of that. I'm hoping that this looks good on camera. Sometimes when I view it afterwards it looks completely different. Okay these edges right here that I left empty I'm doing those orange um, because I don't feel like they need to be full yellow. That'd be too much right there I feel like and then this one because it's mostly shaded I'm going over entirely with orange and this one very lightly because again it's in the shadow so making sure that I'm shading enough with this orange and the darker color while also not shading too much. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with the yellow because I can always add more. No, I'm not. I missed like a whole little part right here. <laughs> and it looked funny. I even missed like shading the outside of this. Okay, there we go. Hmm? No, there we don't go. <laughs> okay, now there we go. I think we will find out um okay first I'm gonna go in on the circle things and really using hard pressure look it it really I love doing like shiny looking things okay then hard pressure on this one as well And this should start to tie everything together once we get, oops, I forgot, round things first. Round. As I skip the largest round thing right here in the center. Okay. I feel like it's trying to tie it in together now. This one and then this one. Yay! And it is. You can tell from the difference between where I haven't added the actual yellow pencil and where I have. I think you can. I haven't checked on the camera. Um, but 
for me, it's enough of a difference that adding all this pencil pays off. Is that, no, this is a round thing, which I don't think I left any room for yellow. I'm still gonna add it. This is a round thing, but I'm not gonna use hard pressure on that. I'm just gonna lightly add some yellow. Okay, now moving on from round things, let's do these. Top little towers. And this one. Ooh, this corner. Yeah. Okay, and I left these really bright. Well, I left this one bright. I don't leave this one bright. I'm unsure about it right now. I like bits and pieces, but I'm overall unsure. We'll find out what I think in a second and what I think it needs. Let me just finish up this yellow before I distract myself. Oh, here we go. This here needs all that and then inside light yellow over here and then heavier yellow all of this oh I missed a round thingy did I not even shade that as if it were round I didn't. No, I shaded that as if it were square and that is definitely supposed to be round. Okay, let's fix this real fast. Use the orange. Yeah, a little bit further in and then, oops, and then use the yellow. All right, come on, come on, oh no. It's a very dark tower. Oh, noes. All right, well, there's mistakes, but it's okay. Let me see. Yeah, this whole section right here is way overshaded. Mm. I mean, I could kind of heavier shade the side of this one. It might help. Let's try. Hold on. Okay, one second. Let me sit down and try to get at this for a second. Oh, you know what it was? It was this stupid palm tree. <laughs> And then in with the orange. I think another thing is that I shaded this top part correctly. And so now it's obvious that the rest is uh, messed up. Okay, let's see. Let me stand up and look at this again. It's a little better. Okay, so I'm going to stop with this part. Now I'm going to do this, which, what colors did I have for that? Uh, hold on one second. Done with that, done with that, done with that. Um... Here we go, and this one. Okay, so I have no idea what I'm doing here, but let's go with 1067, which is 90% cool gray, and then 1065, which is 70% cool gray. Oh wait, I forgot about the sky. 
I'll do the sky real fast. What are we at? 44 minutes? We can do the sky. I'm going to take our purple color, which is violet, 932. And I'm going to lightly go over the entire sky. Eh, am I going to use it lightly? I don't know. I don't even know if it needed this. I should have just not, because I feel like it didn't need it, but that's okay. like over here I'll come partially down but right around here I'll just stop so I'm gonna do that on the side too I'll just not go all the way toward the corner If you're wondering why in the beginning of the videos now I start by standing up, uh, it's because that's the only way that my camera will record the correct direction, <laughs> um, is if I pause and then put it on the tripod. Otherwise I end up having to ro rotate it. Um, okay, done with purple then. All right, now the nerve wracking part. Starting with the darker one, the 90%, um, because it's obvious where that will sit. We can use a harder pressure right around this outside part. And even down as far as right here. We'll do that on the other side. Um, hold on. Okay, and then gonna bring it farther in. Kind of using like a medium pressure here. Along this top edge, I feel like the darker color can also be pressed in. Um, like using a medium pressure along this whole top part. And then come in here and pull it down into the edge right over here. And then for this, we're going to pull it down this way, which is harder for my hand to do. <laughs> okay, so I can see where it's supposed to be darker right here. Then pull. Oh, this is so stressful. Okay. Sorry if I get quiet, it's because I'm very, very stressed. <laughs> uh, shading with uh, markers is a lot less stressful than pencil. I don't know why. I think it's because of the opacity. 
Hey, that side doesn't look too bad. Let's go back to this side because this side is looking rough. <laughs> okay, we're going to not be shy about bringing this in. Bring it in and over and down. Okay, and then we're going to use our lighter one and hope that this works out how I have it pictured in my head. I feel like some of these colors have a different value, so it's not the shade how I'm picturing. But because some of the values inside might already be darker than this. Oh, nope. Here we go. Okay. All right. All right. Going in. And then kind of like wisping the edges. There we go. Again, this top part needs a little bit extra shading because it's underneath the brow ridge. If you see me switch pencils, I'm just switching between 1067 and the 1065. Okay, so around this brow ridge, it's also going to be darker right around the top um, and you know what I'm gonna also pull some of this together and shade it just lightly 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 because I'm terrified right now uh, lightly shade a little bit up from that and then bring this down. Did I use this to that on the side? No. Okay, so we're going to bring this down into this part and this is also going to be brought in and then kind of wisp the edges of the shading because it's harsh. By wisp the edges, I just mean small circles with a lighter pressure. So your hand farther back on the pen pencil, all around the edge of what we just did. And it should make it less harsh. Bring it down here. Bring this, this from here over, going this way, just to kind of do that, and then this here, go this way. Okay, say with the top from here, you're going to go to either direction, and um, it could use more shading but I'm also scared to overwork it and then not be able to go back hold on what if I darken all this where I've been kind of scared to um, Okay, let me...